Hello guys and welcome to We Dubai. Today you guys are in treat for a review of another New York bestseller called Crying in H Mart written by Michelle Zahner. I loved reading this book for many reasons but there are also some shortcomings so let's just get into it. Before I say my opinion, I just wanted to run you guys through the story and what really this book is about. So the main character of this book is Michelle Chongami Zauner, and Chongami is her middle name. She's Korean, she was born in Seoul, Korea, and at nine months old, her parents moved to the United States and Oregon. Her father was Jewish American and her mother was Korean. She never really talks uh, much about how their, her parents met, but she does say that her mom has 10% secrets, so there is that. She was born on March 29th in 1989, so this year she's 32, and this book actually got released in November of 2021, so it's one of the very fresh reads. And her mom died in 2013 when she was 27. That's kind of like what this whole book is about. And part of me, like at some parts of the book, I was like, damn it, this is all about death. But after reading the whole book and really thinking it throughout, I thought that there are four main topics that were discussed in this book. First one was obviously immigration. She talks a lot about how with her mother dying, part of the, her Korean part also died with her. So long story short, basically Michelle was a rebel teenager and like she wouldn't wear the clothes her mom wanted to. They had just really bad rapport. Senior year she had, senior year of high school, she had like a really bad trauma and depression and her mother couldn't understand it. Michelle was also an artist and her mom wanted her to go to college and have a professional career and although she did get into college, she did not succeed in it and she ended up living in Philadelphia where she worked on her bands. Uh, when she worked on the bands for the first five years, she was waiting tables and she was releasing albums but there was not much uh, success out of it. Then her mother died and right before her mom dies, like right when she has cancer, that's when she starts her newest brand called her newest band called Japanese Breakfast. And this one really becomes a hit once her mom dies. So the weirdest part is that up until her mom's death, there are all these conflicts in her life, everything's going wrong, and it seems like because of her death, she changes. So right before her mom dies she comes over to Oregon and she takes care of her mom the same way she took care of her and I thought it was really cute how she said that one time her mom sent her shoes to college and she already walked them in socks so that way Michelle wouldn't have to break in through them and she started appreciating all the things her mom did for her and she really wanted her to have a fun positive rest of her life. Uh, right before her mom died, she also got married because she wanted to give her mom something to look forward to. And in general, she helped a lot with organizing the house. And at the same time, she was releasing music about her mom. And then the full circle moment was really when she got invited to Seoul and to South Korea to perform. And actually one of her songs is gonna be on Sims 4, which I'm so excited about. It's called Be Sweet. So everything really blew up, but she felt like this part of her being Korean has died. And it was a very complicated book because it also discussed um, like the mother and daughter thing. So she talked about how they've argued and how they couldn't under understand each other, but right as her mother was about to die, she, she's learned that her mom was also an artist she was a painter and that they were so similar yet because of their differences and stubbornness they really couldn't get along now her dad is an interesting story because her dad cheated on her mom and she knew it because she found out through the internet but her mom uh, never knew and the weird part was also the, like when her mom was in the hospital and she was getting the iv and she was losing her hair her dad was getting drunk and he was just kind of there um, like at home he wasn't there so that was really interesting and then he also I think retired in Thailand so right after he 
she died, he, they sold the house a year later, and then he moved. Now, what's weird is that I think Michelle has really changed her mind because they had a very difficult time growing up because she said that she was sneaking out when she was this rebellious teenager and she wanted to do music and her parents wanted her to go to college. So it shows that strip parenting and how it separated them from each other. There are a couple of quotes that I really have from this book, but overall I thought that Michelle did a really good job at like describing things. She always talked about her mom's hair, how things smelled, and it's just a very genuine memoir. She doesn't make you feel bad about her mom's death, and it's kind of a cool, crazy story. It's insane to me that through like, you know, something that can be really unfortunate, really great things can happen. So I think for people who are grieving or are experiencing loss, this book really would help you figure out how to deal with it in such a way that, you know, the results of her emotions became such a positive part of her career, which is amazing. Uh, her mom also had some moments when she was really, really mean, and she said that she had an abortion because she was such a terrible child. And again, that's because Michelle was this problematic child and she was a rebel. But then that's also why she did music and she's such, so successful at what she does. I just think that people really didn't understand her as she was in high school. When her mom got really sick, Michelle said that she would radiate joy and positivity if it would cure her. She would wear whatever she wanted, complete every chore without protest. She brought her mom's friends that spoke Korean and they helped her take care of her mom. And even though she had those feelings of jealousy because she wished she was the one making the Korean meals for her mom and they even spoke Korean in front of her and she doesn't understand Korean, which later when she goes back to South Korea to visit her relatives, she wishes she has actually never skipped Saturday school. So her mom wanted her to learn Korean and she sent her to Saturday school and Michelle want, wanted to hang out with friends and her mom told her like, hey, you might regret this one day. And of course that happened later. Now Michelle doesn't talk much about Peter and their relationship. I would love to learn more about that. And I hate how the book just ends with the death because the whole book is just death before death, 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 death. What I think is beautiful is that through culture and through food, so as her mom was dying, she learned all these Korean dishes and she was organizing the house and she really shows like the tools that she's used for self-therapy. And I thought it was awesome that she wrote that whole article and that's probably how the idea for the book sparked. She wrote this article about her story and how she was posting these songs on Tumblr in 2013 and then eventually she gained traction and now as soon as her mom died she literally her career takes off and there are all those things that her mom would have been so proud of but she never got to see it so it's kind of sad for me that her mom saw her rebellion and she saw how she, her daughter was different but she never got to see her success which is kind of sad she also talked about her mom's habits, how she, when she liked things, she really, really um, repeated it. And she talked about the Korean culture. You learn a lot about the different Korean dishes, about the fact that Korean people think that number four is unlucky because it means death in Chinese. So there's a lot of cultural things you also learn through this book, which I think is really fun. And... The last thing I have noted for this book is that there's no momentary translation that mediates the transition from one language to another, which I thought I was cool because a lot of times people ask me, how are you bilingual? How do you speak many languages? And I always tell them like, you don't think about it. It's kind of part of your brain. But overall, I just love Michelle. I love her personality and I love that she's such an independent character. I also love the change of heart, how she once she learned that her mom was sick she was like 
I'm just gonna be nice and I'm gonna do the right thing even when it was hard and she really pushed herself to learn all these Korean dishes and everything to be there for her mom. So it was a pleasure read. I hope that Michelle writes more books. One more thing, she also wouldn't, and the last part is about immigration. So first Michelle talks about how she wanted to be part of like America and then she talks about how she wishes she was part of like more Korean. So a lot of people with immigration have this thing that when they first come here they want to absorb the new culture and they want to leave theirs behind. But what Michelle has noticed once her mother died, she didn't have any Korean culture around her. So she really wished that she has learned more of it and she found it important and beautiful and she wasn't ashamed of it anymore. So I think that's something beautiful we can all bring with us. Let me know in the comments what did you guys think was the most important theme of this book. I definitely enjoyed reading it and I hope you guys like and subscribe this video. I'll make sure to review next book that's your favorite. Love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.